So is taking vitamin D enough? And are you taking enough? Also, do you need to be taking other things to get the most from vitamin D? Well, first of all, vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. It's a hormone. So just a fun fact for your next party you go to. It's involved with promoting bone growth. It's involved with immune system regulation, i.e. autoimmunity, breast cancer, heart disease, depression, weight gain, and lung function, just to name a few. So vitamin slash hormone D is one of those things that's pretty much involved with just about everything in the body. So making sure you have enough is pretty darn critical. Good vitamin D levels also need the right cofactors. So cofactors are things that help you absorb or utilize vitamin D in a better or more efficient way. A shocking three quarters, yeah, that's 75% of the US population has too little vitamin D. Even in sunny locales, such as where my practice is in Southern California, vitamin D is necessary to dampen the immune inflammation and tame autoimmunity diseases such as Hashimoto's, multiple sclerosis, and psoriasis, among other things. So some people with autoimmunity may even need extra vitamin D due to genetic variations that affect the ability of their cells to absorb adequate vitamin D. So for my subscribers, and if you're not a subscriber, click the link below, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've talked about this before in a previous post, but a good goal for most people is somewhere between 70 and 90 on a blood test. Now remember that vitamin D is fat soluble. This means that you can get too much and it can become toxic. So before you go taking a bunch thinking you're being healthy, it's probably a good idea to at least get your levels measured first. And to put a little perspective on this goal of 70 to 90, in all my years of testing vitamin D, I have only ever had two patients, yes, two, have optimal vitamin D levels and not be supplementing with vitamin D. We're just not running around naked or working in the farm or the, in the fields, you know, like we used to. So there you have it. So in addition to supplementing with fat soluble vitamin D, make sure you're getting the right cofactors or helper molecules that assist the biochemical transformations required by vitamin D slash hormone D. These include fat soluble vitamin A, magnesium, and K2, which make vitamin D more bioavailable and help prevent vitamin D overload. Now let me be clear, not everyone needs all of these things, but it's at least a good idea to be aware that taking vitamin D may not be enough, especially if you have other comorbidities, i.e. health issues. So vitamin A and vitamin D work together to make sure your genetic code functions appropriately. There are two main types of vitamin A. Number one is beta carotene, primarily found in brightly colored fruits and vegetables, such as apricots, mango, red peppers, sweet potatoes, carrots, and leafy green veggies. So eat lots of these. The second type is retinol, found in organ meats and dairy products. You probably wanna limit these products because they're not as healthy as the other one. Now you can take vitamin A in a supplement form as both beta carotene and retinol. However, retinol is the more active form. Remember, it's also possible to take too much retinol. Your body can't get rid of it as easily, so it can build up over time and cause toxicity, just like all the other fat-soluble vitamins, A, E, D, and K. The other cofactor we're talking about today is magnesium. You can obtain sufficient magnesium through food, but it's pretty hard with the diet most Americans have, and high doses of vitamin D can deplete magnesium levels even further. So if you're already low in magnesium and supplement with vitamin D, supplementing with magnesium may help avoid headaches, cramping, nausea, numbness, and other symptoms that may accompany high doses of vitamin D and thus magnesium deficient symptoms. The Vitamin D Council recommends 500 to 700 milligrams of magnesium per day. Supplement sources include magnesium glycinate, magnesium citrate, and magnesium malate. Each has unique effects, so consult with my office to learn which is right for your needs. There's pros and cons of all of them. Or in the meantime, and what I often recommend just to keep it simple, kiss, keep it simple stupid, my favorite magnesium is a powdered form of magnesium called Magnero 3, my own formula. Of course, it's my own brand and I'm biased, but I really do find it's the best. Sorry, other guys, just is what it is. 
It's called Magneuro 3 and it's great for sleep, muscle cramps, and nervous system health. See the link in the description. It's also in a chelated form, which means you can utilize and absorb more of it. So I'll discuss these other forms of magnesium in another blog, so don't, for click, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Now, getting magnesium for, from your food. Magnesium rich foods include dark leafy greens, there it is again, potatoes, beans, lentils, avocados, bananas, figs, strawberries, blackberries, nuts, seeds, brown rice, and dark chocolate. Mm. So depending on which one you're eating, eat liberal to lots of amounts of those. The third cofactor that we're talking about is K2, or vitamin K2. Vitamin D toxicity can cause soft tissue to accumulate cal calcium and calcify like bones. In contrast, having optimal vitamin D may protect against calcium deposits in arteries. Vitamin K2 is an important cofactor for vitamin D to help the body deposit calcium in the appropriate locations, such as the bones and the teeth. It also helps in preventing calcium de from depositing where it doesn't belong, such as the soft tissues, i.e. muscles, artery walls, joints, and organs. This can contribute to the development of heart disease, atherosclerosis, and painful osteophytes, which are little bone spurs. This also brings up the topic of supplementing with calcium. And this is a hot topic, future blog. Not everyone should supplement with calcium, and it may even contribute to developing certain issues or making them worse, like the ones I talked about before. This can be discussed in another blog, so stay tuned. Healthy gut bacteria are necessary in converting vitamin K1 to the more active form of vitamin K2. However, we can supply our K1 needs through eating cabbage, kale, spinach, chard, green leafy vegetables, there it is again, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, sprouts, and sauerkraut. The added benefit of eating all these foods is they will help promote healthy gut bacteria. But then again, if we're having gut issues and not getting enough vitamin K1, and we start eating these foods that have vitamin K1, do you think that maybe even though we're eating those foods, maybe we aren't really digesting and absorbing all the nutrients out of it? Yeah. Well, it gets kind of complicated, right? So, anyway. Supplementing can help, but you probably need to fix your gut issues to start with. The five R's, check out my blog. The National Academy of Sciences recommends 90 micrograms of K2 for women and 100, 100, 120 for men. However, the Osteoporosis International recommends 180 of vitamin K2 as MK7. Warning, warning, warning. If you dig blood thinning medications such as warfarin or Coumadin, vitamin K supplements can affect how well your blood clots. So please talk to your doctor slash functional medicine doctor before supplementing with vitamin K. This can apply to ginger, turmeric, vitamin E, ginkgo, and even fish oil. So be careful. So checking your vitamin D levels periodically can help you improve your health if you suffer from chronic illnesses. In functional medicine, we measure vitamin D levels with a serum hydroxyvitamin D test, commonly known as D3. Standard normal levels are considered to be between 20 and 100, which is pretty darn dismal. I personally shoot for higher standards. See my blog on standard versus functional blood testing. Anyway, again, optimal levels are between 70 and 90. Now, if you suffer from leaky gut or autoimmunity, you may be more prone to a genetic vitamin D deficiency. So make sure you pay special attention to this vital vitamin slash hormone. So if this whole thing seemed a little overwhelming and daunting to you, don't worry. We're here to help. Just give us a call and set up an appointment. I do in-person visits in my office, and I also do online visits via Skype or Zoom. So uh, until next time, I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Go take your vitamin D, run outside naked in the sun, do some farming, gardening, sunbathing, get in your bikini, skinny dipping, whatever. Get outside and get naked. <laughs>